probably the prep process. Yeah. That's about to get painted now. Right. Um, so hopefully you can hear me with the fan yeah. behind you, the extraction fan. But yeah, so so we've got a, a two-stage paint process. Uh, we've got two robots, ABB robots, um, and they'll spray the engine first, and they get the kind of easier to get to parts. As you can see, there's a lot of different bits and pieces hanging off the engine at this point. Yeah. Um, um, you know, it's challenging for the robot to get into all the gaps. Um, so once it's been painted by the by the robot. Uh, it'll go into the manual paint booth, um, and the operator then will finish the engine off, uh, get any parts that the robot can't, can't quite get to, and make sure that paint finish, finish is spot on. Right. And then after that, we've got an oven. So we'll talk a little bit about the oven while we wait for this one to go in there. Um, so after this, we've got we've got a, a basically a three-stage oven. Uh, first part's flash off, so that's just a bit of warm air, um, just recirculates around the engine. That starts to get the solvents coming out of the paint. Uh, we then go into a, 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 an infrared oven, so that's infrared plaques, is, uh, there's tw 12 infrared plaques in total, right. in different banks that come through it. So that kind of cures it, does it? That cures it, that right. really just gets the, uh, the, the, the solvents out of the paint and yeah. it starts to, starts to dry the paint out. Um, then the last and final stage that we have at the end of the oven process, we actually have a, a, a chiller, so it, it forces cool air onto the outside of the engine. And that gives us a harder finish on top of it right. so that you can't kind of put your nail in it or, yeah. or scratch it or, or if you lean on it, it doesn't, it doesn't dent yeah. and mark. So. And it's just one coat, is it? It's just one coat. Um, we, do all, we do various different colours, green, brown, yeah. uh, red. We've got a couple of different blacks, a couple of different greys. Uh, we've also got marine primer. Um, so we, we paint marine engines as well. So one of the one of the uh, products that we make here is uh, marine gensets. Yeah. Uh, so the, so the marine engines they get a primer in this area. Uh, they then go offline and they go into another paint booth where they get a two, what's called a two pack paint, uh, and that gets applied to the engine. And that's really really hard. Oh, so they get uh, a bit of an extra one. Yeah, right. really good for the for the salt water. Yeah. Um, and yeah, you'll you'll about to see the uh, the robots in action. So but, but overall, it's quite a quick. Sort of it process, is, yeah, really. yeah. Again, so it's all within cycle time. Um, you know, generally speaking, we could, if, if we had the production going through here, we'd, we'd be capable of getting probably about 23, 24 engines an hour through this whole process. Yeah. Um, so it's, yeah, it's pretty quick. Um, with the robots, it's automated colour change, so it knows what it knows what colour to paint. A red one now. So this is a red one. The one, yeah. the one before it was black. Yeah. Um, but yeah, the, the the RFID system. It's read by the robot, we know what colour to paint it, yeah. automatically changes and picks the right programme. So these boots these boots have got a downdraft. I was gonna say, because nothing's no, there's nothing spilling out, out is no, it? nothing at all comes out. So what we've got is the air the air's drawn in the top, so there's uh, big fans that are pulling air in from outside. It actually warms the air up to 20 degrees. Um, and then it's drawn down through the bottom of the boot, and it's what's yeah. known as a water back boot. So there's actually water in the bottom, so any overspray gets trapped in the water. Uh, and then we filter the paint out and that gets taken away for safe disposal. Right. Well, there's nothing then, it's just that, it's that 140 seconds yep. again, it's that bit, that yep. bit, that bit. Yeah, done. Exactly, exactly that. Just like that. And there we go, while we've been talking, that engine's now red. Well, that was it, it was, when we started talking, it was here. Yeah. It's over there and it's red now. Yeah, it's pretty good. <laughs>
as we can see here, you've got engines of all sorts of different colours. You've got the traditional yep. Cummins Red there. Yep. You've got, what have we got here? Komatsu. That's a Komatsu T4. And, um, and then you've got that's some a stage of these. five. Yeah, so beige ones are often going into things like Genset or they're going into um, an application that's going to be in the desert quite often. Yeah. That's, that's hence the beige. Um, you know, Komatsu. It's it. They're always the black ones, but you know you've got red, you've got all sorts of stuff. Yeah. Um, but yeah, we've got nine liter, six point sevens, everything all comes together at this point. This yeah. is it all just this is it, all here, coming it, together. Yeah. So just I mean, obviously you've got a massive list of customers that you yeah. supply, but just run us through a few names that might surprise people because often your engines we don't see them badged up as Cummins I mean such as that Komatsu there's no yeah. Cummins badges on that so I mean, who we, else would be like that I mean we do engines for Hyundai we do uh, obviously engines for Komatsu but a lot of it's things like um, so there's a lot of on highway customers people like Scania people like Daft um, they take a lot of volume off yeah. us um, Hyundai I, I mentioned but we've got you know bus customers ADL companies like that um, you know, some, some really big uh, manufacturers. If right, it, so if it takes a big diesel engine, it's probably at some point either got or had a Cummins engine in it. Well, that's it, yeah. or a Cummins part, such as the turbos yeah, exactly. as well, because you yeah. supply them to. That's right, yeah. God knows how many people. You know, some, some of the uh, engines we supply to, to certain customers, we don't supply them every engine, we just supply, you know, certain niche, niche areas yeah. of the market that they don't want to make their own engine for, and we, we feel like that. So, so, like, so, such as Scania. Yeah. What size engines well, would you supply then? 6.7s, got a yeah. Scania. Yeah, that's what we Because above, I mean, above Is it that, 9 litre and above they do their own? Yes. Yeah. yeah. So, so, like, so below we that, do, yeah, you we fill that gap. We do 6.7s, yeah. So, right. Yeah, so it's a... Uh, you know, it's the thing that we do very well is we'll make anything for anyone, almost. So, yeah. yeah that's, uh, <laughs> You're it's not too what, No, it's kind of what we're good at. So, yeah, yeah we... Yeah, that's where our, that's where our market is. This is it. This, this is, is it. this yeah. is dispatched. This is they're all off to their homes now. That's it. Yeah, they're all uh, all off to the back to the four corners of the globe from yeah. Uh, and it is literally the, that they are, literally, they are yeah, going all yeah, over the world. All over the world. So they go to um, you know they literally go the other side of the Pennines to Lancashire, or they go <laughs> uh, they go Europe, South Pacific. You know some of them go to the US. They, they literally go all over the place. Yeah. Uh, China, um, Korea, you name it, they go there. So. That's yeah, it. we uh, we supply ev everyone. It's uh, it's quite quite an international business. And then you know, just walking around the plant today, you've got all these different workers uh, that you've got here at Cummins, yeah. all highly skilled engineers. I mean, what, where do you, how do you attract them? Where do they all come from? Yeah, it's 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 one of the big challenges, and you know, not just for Cummins, but I think for for industry in general is, you know. That we're all fighting for the same workers, right? So, yeah. you know, we have to make it a good place to work. We have to look after all people. We obviously have to pay people well, you know, yeah. everybody comes to work for money. But, you know, we have to make it somewhere people want to work. Uh, and, you know, one of the challenges we've had as a company is there's a lot, of, a lot in the news about diesel, the end of diesel and stuff like that. And, you know, that is, the, that is going to be the case in some applications. And, but, you know, there is still future at a place like Cummins, yeah. uh, particularly as we move towards new products further down the line and, you know, whatever comes in the next That's five, it, five years. And, all sorts of yeah, things, all yeah. sorts of stuff coming at us. So, you know, we'll be around for a long time to come. And, and it's about getting that message out into the public and, you know, letting people come in, letting see, see people see what we can do, let them see what kind of career they can have at Cummins. Uh, you know, make people excited to work in engineering and, and you know, all the other associated uh, associated fields, you know. Well, we've that's got... it, because you, you think diesel engines, you yeah. think, oh, just dirty yeah. oil burners, don't exactly. you? But it's not until you come in here yeah. and you see just how clinical it is, yeah. you know, you could be forgiving thinking you're in an operating theatre yeah, exactly. in and some you, place, you yeah. know. And you've got, and you've got high-precision robots, you've got, you know, multi-million pound test cells, um, you know, that are all going into into building these engines, and the technology is fantastic. Um, and you know, it's it's really really interesting entrance, interesting place to work. Yeah. Uh, loads of career opportunities for people at Cummins, and, and not just in engineering. You know, we've got we've got marketing teams, finance teams, HR teams. You know, you you name it, any kind of job that you wanted. Yeah. With you know any kind of regular job, um, you could do it. It's within probably Cummins. here somewhere. It, isn't it, it's yeah. here, and it's. And it's making making that kind of accessible to, to anyone and everyone uh, and making people want to come and work here. 
Um, you know, I know people who, who've lived in Darlington, where our engine plant is for, for all their lives, and, and, you know, don't really know what we do. Yeah. So, you know, hopefully this goes somewhere towards addressing <laughs> well, that. I'll share you... this with friends and family. Yeah. And... You, you do drive past this place. Yeah. It looks such an unassuming building. It's yeah. quite plain on the front, but... Yeah. Behind the but scenes, inside, it's, it's all going yeah, on. Isn't it? it is, it is, it's really good. And you know, every day is every day is an exciting day. Yeah. Uh, it makes it a lot of fun. Spot on. Right. Well, final question then. Um, what makes your Cummins engines unique? Oh. What, what makes them stand out? What makes? Why do we all get excited about Cummins? Um, I mean, I think that uh, you know. We've got, a, we've got a long history of making, of making diesel engines. You know, when people think of diesel engines, they think of Cummins. Um, but, the, you know, the reputations around the performance, the quality, the power, um, and, and they're just everywhere. They're in everything. They're powering, like, so many things around the world, whether, yeah. it's, whether it's gen sets, whether it's a bus, whether it's a boat, whether or a it's... a train or what? You know, you know whether it's, whether it's the, the equipment that's making, you know, making the roads, that the trucks that we've made, yeah. the engines are going to go on. You know, we make stuff for trains, and we'll make things this big to up to 95 litres and you know we it, it's not a joke to say we do power the world yeah and you know that's literally literally yeah and that's uh, you know that's something to get excited about i think that's it spot on well andrew thank you very no, much for your time much. that has been great that yeah. no, it's been a pleasure Absolutely thank you very much especially for someone like me who loves you know loves this stuff <laughs> hopefully you guys will love this as well yeah. so again andrew thank you very much no, thank you it's been a pleasure spot on. cheers